Hello and welcome to my rebuild log of my X99 PC. As you can see here, it's obviously com completed, and um, I just want to do a little revision. Well, not a little revision, but a major one, <laughs> which will have me strip everything out and rebuild it and put it back together. Um, I was going to make some videos on water cooling, which I promised earlier, but with work and everything, it's quite difficult to do that. But then this holiday period has given me a chance to do that so i'll be getting that done right now first of all i would like to say i'm um, the only addition i'm going to add to this is um the vrms i intend to cool the vrms which is this <laughs> it gets quite hot on most forums i've seen and on the on the computers um logs it shows that this is about 50 degrees that's just too hot for for me to keep <laughs> to keep happy it's, it's too hot for me to live in that position i believe at some point it's going to cause me an issue which i don't want and i believe sometimes the computer shuts down when or some full throttle i guess it's due to that but when i water cool that then maybe if that's not the case i might throttle down by overclocking but then there we are so just to go right through the whole system, I think the last video I did, I used clear acrylic pipe. Now it's white. I guess I changed it just because of just because of some upgrades I wanted to make, and they gave me a chance to try a new. This this is, looks a lot better than the clear, the previous one I used, in my view, I guess. Well, um, let's see. So it's the same, just about the same. I've got now. I think I've got two. 970 GTXs and my power supply failed so I got a HX 750i which is a very good one I plug it via USB to the motherboard and I log my power usage and stuff like that it's quite good very nice power supply um, I changed the pump also I think the pump and the power supply the old ones failed at the same time um, the pump had lasted about three and a half years while the power supply was about five years so I guess I got my money's worth out of them. <laughs> so it was about time I changed both of them. So I got a new EKD5 pump now. And I'll talk about that later on when I finish my build and when I want to explain more about the system. All right, so this is the last time you see it this way. Next, I will have a line, a line going up from, from the um, CPU to the VRM and from the VRM to the GPU. And now I change this, um, this is now a um, parallel port, so it fits both graphics cards at the same time and comes out of both graphics cards at the same time, because I'll explain why I did that later on, and well, that's it, so this is the last time you see it this way, and that should be that, I added, I also added a um, flow indicator, that's this. Phobia, I think it's phobia or some. Yeah, I think it's phobia. Flow, flow indicator, which is quite. Um, I don't like it. It's, it's noisy. I want to change it, but then that's all I have for now. So I'll be using that for until I'm ready to change it over to something more, something a lot better. So that's it. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Okay, we are back. I've taken off the um, VRM heatsink and replaced it with an EK water block. The EK water block I got for it. So I'm setting up my um, I'm setting up the the system to go back into the case. Oh, that's the case. All them bits and <laughs> everything is stripped. <laughs> So that's the unit and I guess the inlet of the water cooling will remain the same, the inlet of the CPU side will remain the same, the outlet will go straight into the VRM up the heat sink up there and leave on the other side down to the GPU once, once I finish setting it up. So that's the video, see you on the other side when it's all done. Nice. Hopefully this cools it down better than the hit sink was trying to do. Alright. Bye. Cheers.
Hello everyone, back again. I'm back here again <laughs> for part two of my water cooling guide, I guess. Um, I guess part one went down all right. I got some replies from various people on what they thought, especially an Alex John who gave me a full list of formulas and formulations for <laughs> what he believes affects what uh, water cooling aspects of parts. So I thought, well, I might as well update my video and add a bit more, you know, do a part two, I guess, of everything. Well, as you can see, a lot has changed since part one. Um, with work and everything that's been going on, I've not had the time, but then I had to make time this Christmas holiday period and just make another video. First, you see, I'll just walk you through the new build or the, or the revised build. Yeah, that's the word to use, the revised build. Um, the power supply has changed, that's a HX750i and what happened was I lost the old unit which was my Silverstone, let me see, turn this around, yeah, Silverstone Strider Gold, right, it was a 750 watt gold and I used it for almost four years, it was about three years and about nine months or so i can't remember fully but i used it for about almost four years and it just went pop and that was it <laughs> no more power no more pc nothing <laughs> so when that when that went i had to replace it obviously so i got this this has got so many good reviews online and with the eye i can um i can link the power supply to my motherboard via the usb input and monitor some parameters on the power supply like its health obviously and as you can see the fan isn't, isn't even spinning can let me see get some lights down here that's one of the advantages of this power supply the fan is not spinning down there i hope you can see that but it's one of those very efficient ones and it's a s50 platinum so it's really you know really efficient and I got um, this Corsair sleeved cables, white to go with my white and black team, I guess. And secondly, the pump. The pump has been changed to an EKD5 Vario, very, that's what it's called. It's got a switch at the back where you can change the various um, parts. Um, what else has changed? Obviously the tubing, the acrylic tubing, I changed to a white tubing. I guess in my last build, the black was just too much compared to the white, so I decided to add some more white bits so the tubing is now all white acrylic I bent them myself I also decided to um, water cool if you have a look up here water cool the VRM on this motherboard that's a big problem with this motherboard I, I was surprised that EK just made a water block strictly for this for the VRMs the VRMs get too hot especially when you're running, running the CPU quite you know running a lot of voltage through the cpu or a lot of current through the cpu power through the cpu to be honest well that's about the, the only bits i changed so far and it's been running perfectly well ever since yeah sorry i added two <laughs> new gpus <laughs> the very expensive bits to be honest the two 790s no 970s sorry 970s in sli um, i replaced the 780 because i got a new a new um I better hold it like it's so dark I got a new a new monitor that's a 4k monitor that's this monitor if you can see it I'm say 31.5 inch Dell monitor 4k which is very very good anything you do on this monitor whoa <laughs> and because of that in order to play anything you need to have the graphics horsepower and hence the 780 GTX and SLI okay so let's get back to the topic of the of the hour which is my water cooling guide part, part two there might be a part three and part four because there's just so much to talk about but then i intended to talk about take each component and how it affects your system your cooling you know and talk about each component as like that, was, that, that is my plan um, you can let me know what you think about that idea but if I look at the pump, the reservoir, the coolant itself, the piping and the way you your layout, piping layout and all that. And hopefully that should cover everything I need to talk about for the system, maybe your fans also.